Right now, we are really standing in a moment of multiple intersecting crises. And I think the first thing that needs to happen in this new administration, and you've already seen signals um, in this direction over the last couple of days, is there has to be a public national mourning. We have to cry out in lament. We have to acknowledge publicly the 400,000 plus Americans who've died from COVID and from the gross mismanagement of this virus and incompetence in dealing with it over the past year. We have to collectively lift up and honor the names of so many people whose lives have been lost and, and the shared grief and trauma from really the past several years that this country has gone through. The second part, I think, is about truth telling. Um, people have been saying that we need to engage in a kind of truth and reconciliation process here in the United States. And I really believe that we have to go through a kind of national chuva as a country where we acknowledge what we've been through and what we've learned over the course of the last four years. This is not a new problem, but I think that the previous administration really lifted the veil on what some of the core foundational challenges have been and where those pain points have been in our country from even before its founding. I'm talking here about, about white supremacy, which has really reached its tentacles into every aspect of life in the United States. And I think we saw it in, in full form, not only over the summer with, um, with the murder of George Floyd, um, and, and, and a growing awareness of, of the way that law enforcement has been a part of really suppressing and oppressing the black population here for many, many years. But we saw it on January 6th at the Capitol. And so I think part of what this moment has to be is not only a time to grieve, but also a time to tell the truth about what the foundational heartache is in this country and what we're willing to do to heal. And then we have to rebuild together. We have to build a counter narrative to the America that was. This country was founded on some really beautiful ideas, but at the heart, we have never achieved what we set out to achieve here. And, and so there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the rebuilding effort right now in order to lift up a society that's truly just and loving, that's inclusive, and that's accepting of all of us. You, you talk about how to try to unify America again. American Jewry needs some, some healing as well. And there is a rift right now uh, within the American Jewish community that only seems to be growing, uh, secular versus orthodox, uh, reform uh, uh, versus uh, the more uh, uh, religious. There, there is this chasm growing right now. Where, where, where is this leading the Jewish community and, and how do you feel that you and other, other community leaders can be of help in trying to mend that rift? Yeah, there is a growing rift, not only within American Jewry, but also between American Jewry and Israeli Jewry, frankly. And this is something that we absolutely have to address. 77% of American Jews voted as we historically always have, overwhelmingly Democratic, because the American Jewish community has identified that the Democratic Party has, for the last many decades, lifted up those values that are core Jewish values that so many of us identify with. These are uh, a responsibility to protect the earth, to lift up the dignity of every single human being, to fight for equity and equality and really build a just society. Um, that's 77 percent of the American Jewish community. We know and, and understand that among Israeli Jews, it's almost the opposite. Um, it's almost about 25 percent um, that support that, that supported the, uh, the the now now new new administration here, and about 75% that supported the old administration, which was deeply despised by the overwhelming majority of American Jews. So this rift is real. Um, we see things very, very differently now. And what we need to do is sit down as family and have a real honest conversation about who we are, what we believe in, and what kind of society we ultimately want to live in. One thing that's very clear over the course of the last five years since there's been this dramatic spike in anti-Semitic attacks here in the United States is that when white supremacy is lifted up and brought into the mainstream and really given the opportunity to thrive in the mainstream, it makes us all vulnerable. And, and so if we want to work together toward a future in which we can actually be safe in this country and around the world, we have to join together in a commitment to fight white supremacy, to fight racism, and to fight against anti-Semitism, and instead to lift up a different kind of vision of what is possible.